You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. Craig, you're back. So happy. How you doing? Oh, I'm so glad to see this little bear back in the chat. Word to it, my friend. Yay. All right. Yay. So while we while we're recording, I'm also on my other computer uh, doing my uh, my part time job training. <laughs> oh, what's your part time job? Uh, so I got a job. Um, I got a federal job. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I, I work for the. Uh... Oh shit! I can't remember how to say it. Fancy. I'm basically a census enumerator. Oh, okay. Yeah, I go around. Well, once I finish my training, I will go around door to door to get people to do their censuses. Oh boy! Oh yeah, it's actually it's so pretty good part time money. So I can imagine. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm guessing since I have already done my my census, you will not be coming to my door. Oh, that and unless you're in the uh, Great or uh, Nash Edgecombe or Pitt County areas, I also will not be coming to your door. That's fair enough. That's uh, fair enough. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. So I've just, uh, I've kind of got to get this done in somewhat of a uh, timely manner. And, mm-hmm. of course, they gave me all my stuff to do, like, on the week that I'm working. 12-hour oh. days. So, you know. Of course. <laughs> it's so unique. Yeah. Good well, times. But, uh, I think. I promise oh, I'm, I'm sort of listening. Oh, that's fine. Well, I'm, I know what can get you super listening and, and get those ears perked up. <gasps> a trip to Evian on France? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes. Where we'll talk about what happened in what was an amazing yeah. set of quarterfinal matches and a mm, set of uh, semifinal matches here on episode 328 of the Foreign Affair Podcast, I am Edward Green, joined as always by McCullen Crime West Bradshaw. Uh, it's going to be a good one, folks. Um, yeah, it was very, very exciting, uh, and a lot, a lot of people in the uh, in the one the one leg t- tie grouping were very happy in the uh, quarterfinals. Not so happy in the semifinal leg. Uh, that's okay. Um, we'll talk about those matches that took place uh, in the Champions League, and briefly mention the ones that took place in the Europa League as well. Uh, that set us up for our two finals for uh, those man, two European I'm not hearing, competitions. I'm not hearing literally oh. anything that you're saying. Oh, hello? You, can you... Yeah, I, I'm um, not hearing anything from you, hardly. All right, let me try disconnecting. I can hear you now. I just, I couldn't hear, like, any of your, uh, your open. Can you hear me again? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, well... Then I'll just keep on with that intro and say, you know, we're going to do, we're going to have plenty to talk about from the Champions League uh, quarterfinals and semis that took place this past week. Champions League quarters, pretty great. Semis, eh, not so much. Uh, we'll talk about that and some of the news and notes that happened in the world of uh, European football this week. And then we'll hit uh, the Watch 4 and we'll call it a week. Uh, as always, p- podcast is presented by NGSC Sports and NGSCSports.com. We never stop. Especially posting really weird articles from like five years ago on our Twitter feed for like no reason. That and if you click on them, it's like the the Latin gibberish text, like lorem ipsum dolor. Did I do that that or something? No, I don't think you did, Wes Bradshaw. I I think you're in the clear on this one. 
So, uh, so yeah, that was. Well, so, uh, oh, wait a minute. What about what about done? Because I actually did put some shit on Twitter this week. So. Oh no 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 no! no. You're good. You're good. Cool. You thank are you. good. Um. So first, let us head as Wes mentioned. Uh, actually, well, we're not going to France. We're going. We're going to Lisbon. We might be partying in France later, but for now, we're going to Lisbon, Portugal, for the site of the remaining quarterfinals and the semifinals of the 2019-2020 Champions League. Uh, when last we left you, we had just gotten through um, PSG narrowly scraping by Atalanta 2-1. to And we were like, ooh, it's going to be a good one. Oh, we got some good matchups here. And, ooh, looking forward to Man City, Bayern Munich. It's going to be, oh, so good. And, ooh, Atletico, they could still do some stuff. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> yeah, our pod did not age well, did it? Oh, it did not. Literally, literally minutes after coming out. Uh, hey, hey, you. let's give credit where credit's due. Credit where credit's due. You called Baron thrashing Barcelona. You did You did get that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's about how every Barcelona fan after that match. <laughs> um, so let's start. We'll go, in, as always, in chronological order. Let's start. Leipzig 2, Atletico 1. Uh, it was a Tyler Adams goal that broke the deadlock, uh, making America proud once again on the world stage in football. Um, Tyler Adams comes through. Um, I believe, I might get this wrong. I believe this is his fifth professional goal all time. And only it comes, this is his first one for uh, Leipzig. Yes, very big moment for the young lad. Uh, coming through when it matters most. To put Atletico, or sorry, to put Leipzig back out in front over Atletico, two to one. Uh, all the goals coming in the uh, the second half. Um, and West, there was a lot of, uh, as there tends to be when when teams that employ certain tactics lose. We'll get to another one in a minute. <laughs> uh, there there is sometimes some hand wringing and gnashing of teeth when it comes to the coaching staff. Um, a <laughs> lot of criticism over Simeone for for being even maybe more defensive and passive than usual with Atletico Madrid. Uh, Leipzig being allowed to do a lot uh, in the flow of the game and coming through as victors um, was a was a bit of a shock, I think, to a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of people thought Leipzig ha- certainly had a chance, um, but it was going to be very tough to score against Atletico's defense. And uh, But he- here they are. They have... Made it through to the semifinals, where they would eventually get knocked out. But they made it to the semifinals. A uh, big moment for them and that club, which is just shooting up through the ranks uh, over in the Bundesliga. Um, they did. Uh, God, going back, to the, it's like it's like going so far back in time now to think about that Atletico uh, Leipzig match. Um, man, you know, Atletico are just. Atletico were my pick to really do something here, and they just laid a big old fat egg. Yeah. Um, Atletico, from one day to the next, I mean, they go from frustrating and, you know, pulling out some spectacular at Anfield of all places to beat Liverpool, the yes. freaking arguably the best team in the world, to just looking so dour and despondent. Mm against a Leipzig team that, I mean, let's be real, Leipzig is not as good as Liverpool. <laughs> we know no, that. They're no, not no, as good no, as no. Liverpool. And you go from playing dynamic and well against Liverpool to just, just playing like dross against Leipzig. Um, disappointing, I think, for Atletico. But they've got they've got some issues of their own there. I think they've got some identity issues right now, which is crazy mm-hmm. to think for a Simeon team. Um, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, as for Leipzig, though, I mean, they just, they were fantastic. It's been an absolutely insane run for them. Um, they have, they have uh, developed whatever you think about the whole Red Bull um, hierarchy and the, the line that they use uh, <laughs> with Salzburg, um uh, New York, NYC, mm-hmm. uh, what are they? Um, New York Red Bull. Yeah. New York Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a difficult one to remember, right? Wes? Um, <laughs> and then Leipzig, whatever you think about it, um, sporting wise, 
they've done a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're really good, and then they've actually got another Austrian team in the Austrian second division. That right. is kind of like their welcome to Salzburg kind of deal. <laughs> but they're so good at developing guys down there and then taking them into Leipzig, you know, when they're like, okay, and um, uh, the, the center back they have right now, whose name I suddenly cannot remember. Um, Osterman? No, the one star with an A. Uh, Angelina? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, he, Adams? He, oh, you're talking about Tyler Adams? No, I'm not talking about Tyler Adams. Um, Never mind. We'll just keep going. <laughs> I, I can't. I cannot remember his name. He's he's from he's an African um, descent player that they got out of France. But anyway, um, cut his teeth at Salzburg when they when they saw um, he was ready. Is it Upamenko? I think it's yes. Upamenko. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you, I thought you said you started with an A. Yes, yes, um, Upamenko. Yes. Okay. I did too for some reason, and suddenly it hit me. Um, but, you know, when he got his feet at Salzburg a couple of years later, they're like, okay, you know, he's ready to step up the next one. And, you know, I guess it can be a little shady, but you know what? They made the deal among themselves, and they brought him to Leipzig, and he's done nothing but just make himself a better football player. These guys have done nothing but make themselves better football players. Um. Hmm. They've done an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, when you look at some of the guys that they've already moved on, uh, that Red Bull themselves, I mean, you think just real quick, three names out of this Red Bull organization that just completely jump on the page when you say them, uh, Nabi Keita, Erling Holland, and Timo Werner. Yeah. Uh, you think about that. I mean, God, this is a team that was supposed to have Timo Werner. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of what maybe came back and bit them late was they just didn't have any firepower left up front. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they have done a great job in developing players. And they here's the thing. They have some money, but they're not like – they're not running Bayern money. Right. You know, they are, they are much more in the Dortmund mold of, you know, they would rather get guys and develop guys. And mm -hmm. something I actually read in an, an article about Upamenko was um, what's kind of different there is most places, if you've got, say, you've got a 27-year-old and a 20-year-old who are the same skill level, you're usually going to defer to the 27-year-old because, hey, you know, he's got a little more experience. Well, no, mm -hmm. if they do that at RB, it's going to be, all right, we're going with the young guy because this is the one that we feel we can develop for. At this point. Right. So um, it, it's been a great experiment. Ralph Ranyuk, uh, was the manager for a good while. Now he's the sporting director. Um, Julian Nagelsmann, uh, who is the, the next, he, yeah, he's the next great young German manager out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got to the freaking semifinal, man. They did an amazing job. Um, and they beat a pedigree team, Atletico, for whatever mm -hmm. we, we've talked about, whatever is up with Atletico. Um, mm -hmm. They still are a pedigree team, and yeah. um, and they got it done against them. So uh, absolutely, more power to them. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still the bet, still the bet. Where the betting favorites were at Atlético on the day. So uh, so big job coming out of there with the win for Red Bull. Um, we'll talk about this for a minute, um, and we and we'll. I'm sure the fallout will be something we talk about in tra the transfer market for weeks to come. Now. Uh, Bayern eight, Barcelona two. Uh, Bayern beating Barcelona worse than they beat Tottenham earlier this year, uh, <laughs> which means obviously Spurs better than Barca. Confirmed. Um, this. I this mean, may I, have... you might not really have to argue that that hard so, <laughs> at this point. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, very rough day, and and what may be the the somewhat end of an era for the Catalans. Um, Baron just did literally whatever they wanted this entire game. Um, and one of the goals for Barcelona was an old goal. So again, we're going to get to more of Barcelona in the weeks to come as the transfer market hits, because apparently virtually everyone on that team is up for sale if, if possible. Um, but Wes Baron in conjunction with, with like what they did, uh, today against Leon, um, you never know because this has been weird, but they they've started to look like the absolute favorites. To uh, even with this match, they were starting to look like the favorites, 
And now there's little question that Bayern might be the uh, the favorites to lift the trophy once again. Bayern good, Barca bad. Up dudes to the left. We can definitely agree on that. Um, yeah. yeah um, I mean, Bayern, you talk about a team who is just really hitting their stride and Bayern Munich are that team. It's, it's like, it's almost like the German league had the perfect um, <laughs> system for these European teams to get their matches done. And then they got just enough of a break afterwards that mm-hmm. they could recharge before the European matches. Mm-hmm. But they didn't lose like they didn't like lose their sharpness. Mm-hmm. So once again, German engineering at its finest. Um, wow. But oh my god, you just want to talk about a team who was completely outclassed, got completely run over on the day. Um. Barcelona just uh if there was any question so well you know Barca might be getting a little old no they old <laughs> yeah they old yeah um well you know La Masia hasn't been producing no it ain't produced shit it ain't produced shit um it is uh every every wart every boil every mole on Barcelona was brought to the forefront and was laid out on a world stage to see. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, we know, I mean, you knew anyway, but now you know without a shadow of a doubt, just because you have the best player in the world does not mean at the end of the day that you're going to find a way to prevail. And for Barcelona, this is becoming a, it has become a, become a very worrying trend. And I yeah. think finally they realized we have to do something about this. Um, you look at the last few years, uh, first in, in against Roma a few years ago, last year mm-hmm. against Liverpool, and now this match against Bayern, they have been their deficiencies have been laid bare for the world to see. And I think finally, finally, they realize that they've got to fix this shit. As as I mentioned earlier, everybody on the chopping block and ready to be sold potentially for Barcelona. So uh, we're, we're going to see what the transfer market brings to them in the coming weeks. Um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll touch that just one more time uh, when we get to our athletic story. Sure. I uh, can't wait. Um, final quarterfinal match. One that will bring West Bradshaw Ooh. literally zero joy. joy. No <laughs> joy at all. Oh man, Leon three, Manchester City one. This was their year. This this was their time, and yet it just wasn't to be. Um, another disappointing end as one of the other great Musa Dembele's in the world uh, struck twice uh, in the closing ten minutes of the match to give Leon the needed two goal advantage to shut out Manchester City. Um, more memes were born. Um, the, one of the great ones is, uh, is just taking a picture of Harry Kane and, and putting the text on there. That's why he didn't center it for Sterling. Um, there have been articles upon articles upon articles about, uh, Guardiola's choices in this match for, for how he came out, for the roster he put out there. Um, just, I don't think there's anything else to say, Wes, except this was an unmitigated disaster. Yes, yes, I, I think it was either last year or two years ago in the Champions League group stage, Leon beat City, um, and uh, one of the players uh, who scored, Maxwell Cornet, uh, actually scored in those matches as well. So there was like, Leon did have some level of comfort somehow against City, but. This was a city team that was supposed to contend and try to win the Champions League, at least move past where they had been in the last couple of years, losing in the quarterfinals to Spurs, losing in the quarterfinals to Liverpool. And here they are losing again in the quarterfinals, this time to the French club Olympique Lyon. Well, I mean, here he was. It was laid out on a silver platter for the great Pep Guardiola, the greatest manager who's ever lived. Oh, so much smarter than everyone else. 
Oh, his mind will just wrap, wrap you in golden lace and put you to sleep and you'll fall to the sword of the great man united the great pip. <laughs> Negative. We've been talking about this for the last, as long as we've been doing this show, we've been, since pip got to city and they have been, to borrow from my earlier, laid open bare for the world to see Pep Guardiola might be the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> Pep Guardiola demands that everyone see that he's the smartest guy in the room. And for whatever reason, when he gets deep into this tournament, when it's time to just let the boys play, because you have, talent-wise, maybe the best team in the world, instead, Pep wants to go match up for matchup. With the team that finished seventh in the French League. Because he can't just trust his guys to go play. No. Let me ask you this. If he was playing Burnley on a Tuesday, do you think Pep would have gone three at the back? Because, oh, well, Burnley have a couple of scary guys up front. Even though they're finishing 12th this year. Hell no, Pep wouldn't do it. But suddenly he gets here. And he, he, he has too, maybe he has too much time to think about it. But Pep decides he's going to be smarter than everyone and he's going to start changing things up. He has no creativity on the field. He leaves um, he leaves both Silvas uh, and Real yeah. Mares on the bench for this match. When, in, in a match that's just crying out for a little bit of creativity from City, he leaves them on the bench. And at the end of the day, he craps the bed. Now that said... Players have something to do with that. Uh, Jesus <laughs> missed what should have been a goal. Hmm. And then, oh, Raheem Sterling. Oh. Number number 38 on the Athletics with best 60 Premier League players of all time. They can have it. It was wonderful. And at the end of the day, Raheem Sterling just, he skies it. A wide open net. The shot that will live in infamy in the career of Raheem Sterling. It was that, it was, oh, it did my heart good. A little rat. Hey, oh, if you think about oh, it, this oh, is oh, now back-to-back oh, -back oh, quarterfinals in the Champions League where City has lost with Sterling missing the open goal there and last year them getting a goal uh, denied on VAR. Like, you can't make this shit up. You can't write this out, man. No, you can't. Um, I mean, when when suddenly everything is on the line and when these guys, these, you know, super, super well-paid, highly touted, you know, internationals with, once again, the best manager ever. And it all just... It all blows up in their face. And then their deficiencies, which are their defense, are just laid bare for the world to see. Um, a couple of counter goals laid by Musa Dembele and Baba Man City for the most expensive squad in the world with the quote unquote best manager in the world in four tries now has not gotten past the quarterfinals, even though. At least in the last three. Now, the first year it was there, they didn't get out of the round of 16. <laughs> and I suddenly cannot remember who they played in that one. But I, oh. you know, over the last three seasons, mm -hmm. Liverpool two years ago, oh, excuse me, Roma, Liverpool two years ago. No, okay, okay, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting behind myself now. Okay, Liverpool two years ago, Tottenham last year, Leon this year, mm -hmm. had the better pick. And I'll admit that fully. Liverpool two years ago, the Liverpool team that went and lost in the final to Madrid, they weren't as good as City. Mm -hmm. We kicked their ass. Tottenham was not as good as City last year. Certainly. Legs, they got their ass. Lyon, certainly not as good as Tottenham. And, they mm -hmm. and it's just, um, it's just, it's a combination of things from Manchester City, but it's very poor. 
at the end of the day, it's just the court. And it's not a kid. If it was anyone other than Pep Guardiola as the manager, that's mm-hmm. why I don't think he survives this. Well, Wes Bradshaw, he- it's funny you say that. It's oh. very funny you say that, actually. Because oh. the last time uh, Manchester City made it to the semifinals of the Champions League, Pep Guardiola was not in charge. No. It was someone else. Yeah, it was, was Manuel uh, Pellegrini. Pellegrini, yeah, who they just had and, as hard as they could. Go uh, ahead. I've got some. Yeah, and he, he got, they lost to uh, Real Madrid 1 0 there in the uh, semifinals. Didn't look great in that, but that's, I mean, that was a Real Madrid team who was in the middle of winning like multiple right. Champions Leagues in a row. Uh, and then the next year, the one you cannot remember, the Pep's first year, uh, round of 16, an away goals loss 6 6 to Monaco. Jeez, that's it. And that was the good Monaco team, so. Yeah, that was the one that made Monaco made the semifinals and lost four one to Juventus. That was Mbappe and um, mm-hmm. God, all those guys who him, Bernardo Silva, Mbappe, Fabinho, you know, all those guys who now play mm-hmm. for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Um, something to point out about Pip, and this is interesting to me, just going back and thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Pep going to Bayern Munich. Pep yeah. was announced in January. It was announced in January of that season that Pep Guardiola was going to be taking over that team from Jupp Heynckes, who wasn't very happy about it. And what did Jupp Heynckes do? He won the treble and won the Champions League. They brought in Pep, and Pep could not could not live up to that. So Pep, uh, the next time it's announced, you know, before the season's over, that Pep is going to be replacing Manuel Pellegrini. And... And what's Pellegrino do? He gets them farther than they've ever gotten the Champions League. Well, they're going to bring in Pep and do better. And he's done worse. I just find it very I find it very ironic a bit that that's happened twice now. Yeah. yeah. And also, because of the hubris of Pep Guardiola, I find it quite satisfying. <laughs> that the guy, oh, we've got to get Pep to take over from this guy who can't get the job done like Pep can. And Pep can't equal what either of those guys do. He's, so, he's won a lot of trophies, but he hasn't, since Barcelona, he hasn't won the big one. Oh, but he knows how to win that League Cup. <laughs> he's great at winning February trophies. Well. <laughs> I say that like he hasn't won shit but the League Cup. But still, uh, I mean, here's the thing. That City was already winning the League. Yeah. They were winning the FA Cup. They were winning the League Cup. You know, they didn't bring... Pep Guardiola in to continue to win the league every just to win the league and just to win the league cup. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of like Cristiano Ronaldo at Juventus. You'd already won seven consecutive Scudetto. Congratulations, you know you've won a couple of more with Ronaldo, but you didn't bring Ronaldo in to continue to win Serie A. You brought mm-hmm. Ronaldo in to win the Champions League. And there are certain clubs in this world where that is the expectation. It's you know, and, and it is Juventus, it's Bayern Munich, it's um, it's Barcelona, it's Real Madrid, um, it's Manchester City at this point. Mm-hmm. You don't bring these guys in, you don't bring in these big name coaches just to win the league because you're winning the league already. You're right. bringing in a big name coach and replacing somebody else who's successful, you're replacing them because you you need to take the next step. You need to win the Champions League. Mm-hmm. And for Barcelona, it's not happening. For Juventus, it's not happening. For City, it's not happening. For Bayern, it might finally happen. But, but you know, it took them. It took them with a team that under Jupp Heynckes was the best team in the world. And well, don't get me wrong. I mean, Guardiola is a great manager. But at the same time, you basically had to take a team that was the best in the world at doing what it did. And you had to change it just because you brought in Pep. Right. Yeah. It's like you brought in Pep just for the sake of bringing in Pep Guardiola. <laughs> um, so that hasn't worked for him. And, you know, we're getting further and further away from Pep Guardiola lifting the European Cup. You know, the last time he had a decent little amount of hair on his head when he did it. <laughs> he, was wearing a suit, he was wearing a suit and tie when he, when he lifted it. You know, mm-hmm. Now he wears um, these incredible uh, hooded sweaters, you know, that are 
obviously uh, custom made for him. Um, it, it's been a long time since Peb lifted what he quote unquote built his reputation on was being the master of Europe. Yeah, help yep. when you have the best team in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> help when you had you know the whole Messi via Xavi and yes the Puyol deal that was nice. So um, anyway, to me, it's, I mean, you can't deny Pep Guardiola being one of the absolute best managers in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But this group that wants to go on and on about, oh, he's the greatest manager ever. Okay. And showed it to me, but, you know, he he has, he has done a fantastic job of elevating city through a lot of money as well into a perennial Premier League powerhouse who set the points record, um, who won back-to-back titles, who won a treble, domestic treble last year. He is he is a great coach. You are right. He is an absolutely great coach. Mm-hmm. And it just gets back to none of that is really why they brought him in at City. No. None of that is. It's great that he is so successful in the league. And that that is something to be applauded. But... At a certain point, and I'm, I'll mention it here. Now, this is our point to pimp the athletic, but uh, you know, the athletic has an article: Guardiola is bulletproof at City, but are all his players still as convinced? And that's the other thing. Like those players are going there. You know, a lot of them aren't. They're going there to win the league anymore. Who cares? They're going there to win the Champions League. They're going there to play for what they want to believe is the best team in the world. And if they can't get it done in the Champions League, if he can't get it done in the Champions League, then what's the point? And at a certain thing, that's like we've talked about it for so long, and it was always like, well, will, you know, oh, if City gets their ban from the Champions League for two years, will Pep just leave? At a certain point, it might not be up to Pep anymore, as crazy as that sounds, for as amazing results as he's had in the Premier League. I, I wonder if at a certain point city management just goes, you know what? It's been six years. You know, next year will be six years. We haven't won a Champions League. We're, things are feeling stale. Maybe it's time to move on. I don't know where the hell we go from here there, but you know, maybe maybe it's Julian Nagelsman. I don't know. But maybe it's Josie Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Ah, everybody would love that. Um, but. That's the thing. Like at a certain point, it might just not be up to Pep anymore, and that is a bizarre thing to even consider. I don't know, six months ago. Well, and the thing is, if if or if and when that day does come, it's you wonder what the rebuild is going to be like at City because oh, yeah. this team has been built as as the great nature boy Ric Flair would say, custom made from head to toe. <laughs> This this is custom made head to toe for Pep Guardiola. I mean, they brought in their director of football relations. I can't. I, you never know some of these guys' titles. But Ziki Bergestan mm-hmm. was there for two or three years before Guardiola, getting it, getting everything ready for Pep to bring him to City. Bergestan had been one of the big guys behind the scenes at Barcelona when Pep was there. Um, they would have never hired Bergestan. Outside of the thought of, hey, we're going to bring in Pep Guardiola one day. Yeah. So I mean, not, so this was this was Pep's fourth season. He's about to go to his fifth, but this project for City in the Pep Guardiola mode, this is going to be like year eight of that. Yeah. Because once again, this team was put together for Pep Guardiola. I mean, you look who was already there when he arrived. It's not like he had to tear down the squad and rebuild it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there were guys he moved out and brought in, obviously, but that squad was put together in the mold of we're going to have Pep Guardiola one day. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, sometimes it's just it's a sometimes it's just a mental block. It can be anything, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's it's absolutely crazy. What is? You know, when you look at it, it just kind of blows your mind. Like, damn it, what is what is it with this group? Yeah, I mean, you know, they've got the players. Now that said, they were weak at the back, and that was poor planning from Neil a season ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks sure. like so again the transfer news. It looks like they're working to remedy that. Mm-hmm. 
even though we'll see, <laughs> I mean, we'll see how great <laughs> that is. But um, you know, name wise, at least they're definitely working to remedy that. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. But um, here's my thing: I don't, I don't think there's any way that they that they part ways with Pep Guardiola. I think it, it will be on Pep's timeline to do it. Okay. But, you know, we've talked about that before. This is Pep Guardiola who doesn't stay at places for extremely long amount of time. I want to say off the top of my head, did he do six, five or six seasons at Barcelona? Uh, I can check on that real quick. Yeah. Um, he was at Barcelona, Barcelona main club, 08 to 12. So, five years, I guess? Yeah, but based on when he did it, yeah, anywhere from four yeah, to five I mean, years. When you, when you start breaking into seasons, so say five seasons. Mm-hmm. Well, this is season five at City. He only did three at Munich. Mm-hmm. And every time he's left somewhere, it has been, oh, I'm, you know, I'm tired. I need, I need time. I need this. I need that. Mm-hmm. Um. So, well, you know, I mean, he he had he took the sabbatical after leaving Barca. Mm-hmm. I think he left straight from Bayern and came right into City. But once again, that was that had been worked out. I think a long time before it did happen. Um, I mean, I I don't expect Pep to leave City and go right into another job. Let's put it that way. Um, because I don't think there's any job in the world that you would that he would straight up leave Manchester City for right now. So I think when it's done, he's going to take some time off, and then we'll see. We'll see if Pep decides to come back for another go somewhere. Um, another thing we've talked about before: there's only so many places in this world that Pep Guardiola can go. Because yeah. you know Pep ain't going to Crystal Palace. <laughs> oh darn! You know Pep ain't going where he hadn't got a shit ton of money. <laughs> um, uh, he's he's been Barcelona. He's not. You're not going to go to Real Madrid, obviously. Um, he's been, he's been to the biggest club, and he's been so he's been to one A, one B, the biggest club in Spain. Um, he's been to the biggest club in Germany. He's been to the biggest club money wise in England because he ain't no Liverpool or Man United. City ain't no Liverpool or Man United when it comes to history, but. Uh, <laughs> you know, money wise, he's been to the biggest club in England. I mean, the only other two places I could see him going would be PSG or Juventus at this point. Yeah. You, I think he'd be interesting, Juventus. We've heard that one bandied about before. I don't think PSG mm-hmm. holds anything for him because, well, I'll put it this way if PSG can figure out a way to win this Champions League, I don't think he ever goes to PSG because. Once again, I think he needs that kind of validation when he goes somewhere. I think he would love to be the first one to win the Champions League, obviously at City. He would love to be the first one maybe at PSG. And he would love to be the one who finally brings it back to um, to Juventus. <laughs> and I think that was a big selling point for him to go to Bayern Munich was, oh, he's going to be the guy to bring it back. And then, oh, shit, Heike's beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I really, I really looking back on it, I think that somewhat submarined his his um, project a little bit at Bayern Munich. Was hey, I'm sub- I'm the missing piece for us to win Europe. And, oh shit, they just won it. <laughs> Crap, they won it. <laughs> you know, they don't have to have me to win it now. So, um, yeah, man, it, it's it, it's going to be something when Pep does decide to leave, and I just. I don't, I don't know how much longer Pep stays. Sure. Let's put it that way. I mean, let's say they have another exhausting season this, this coming year where let's say that I surely don't see anyone finishing 20 points above them again. <laughs> but, you know, let's say them and Liverpool kind of go down to the wire and Liverpool beat them for the title by two points. And let's say they go out in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. I don't know if Pep's got another run in him after that. Yeah. You know, for Pep, it might just be like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. And of course it will <laughs> come down to his quote health. I'm sure. Cause you know, that's how these guys all leave. It's cause of oh, yeah. um, the, I hate to say it's, it's not just because he's my guy, 
but I really think Jurgen Klopp's like the only one who tells the truth on anything. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to come for this period of time. I'm not going to stay afterwards because, you know, I will burn myself out. And, you know, I think I've been here long enough. So this is what I'm going to do. I think Klopp's like the only one who's really straight yeah. up. Klopp, Klopp is such a different animal in mm. all regards. It's, it's, it's not funny. But um, as for Pep, I, I think we could be in the – I think we could be getting into the last days of the Pep Guardiola Man City Empire. And you know what? They can come back and they can win England. They can win their League Cup. They can win the FA Cup. If they don't win the Champions League, if Pep Guardiola goes five years, wins three, if he's there five seasons, wins three Premier Leagues and however many of those domestic trophies he wins and does not win Europe, I think at the end of the day, he's going to look back at that as a failed venture. Oh, for sure. Especially with the way they've gone out, I, I think for sure. Exactly. exactly. Um and and once again, it's not like he's losing to it's it's not like Bayern knocking him out here. Yeah. Or, you know, Real Madrid was knocking him out those other years. No, I mean mm-hmm. this is you know, once again, I mean now I mean Liverpool, Tottenham, for what it's worth, they both ended up losing in the finals. So it's not like mm-hmm. they were bad teams, but they weren't you 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 won't look back at either of those two teams and go, Oh, those were all time great. Right. You won't look at that. You know, you can look at Liverpool a season ago where they won Europe and and won 97 points in the league and finished runner-up as, okay, hey, that was a great team. But one the year before, that was a building Liverpool team. They mm-hmm. weren't great. You know, Tottenham, as we came to find out, that was the last throws of the Pochettino empire at Tottenham. You know, they were on their last legs as a, as a project. So... You know, Pep is not going out to all-time greats here. He's getting beat by teams that, on paper, he's the favorite. Absolutely. And they're finding ways to blow this. And and Leon, good. Oh. Not to take anything away from Leon, but they're Leon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk move, they're Leon. <laughs> hey, Leon, you played great. Congratulations. <laughs> but really? more about Pep. Absolutely. More about Pep. More about Pep's substitute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's about where I've got to go with that. And I think it's been said before, and we just kind of get a yearly uh, yearly refresher course on it. So. Yeah, and it it's doesn't look like it's going to be changing. And as you said, we'll get into one major news and note here coming up in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, City, City's got some thinking to do on this very short uh, turnaround and going into next season. Um, so that takes us into the final semifinals, which took place the last two days. Um, yeah, we're nearly as exciting or interesting. Uh, PSG beat Leipzig 3 0. Uh, this is a very different Leipzig team than we'd seen in the quarterfinals or elsewhere in the Champions League. Just really, really poor. Uh, the, the aggression that they had shown in a lot of their other matches just completely devoid, uh, on this night. And, uh, PSG just took it to them. Um, uh, Neymar still missed about eight goal opportunities. Um, as I said to you, somebody said, uh, the, the person who was commentating on the game said, you know, uh, Di Maria, Mbappe, Neymar, how do you contain them? And as I texted you, it's like, well, just let Neymar shoot. Yeah. Apparently, apparently that's the answer. Uh, but PSG do get through uh, 3-0. I believe this is the first time in 25 years they'll be headed to a European final. And uh, Bayern Munich will be joining them there after a 3-0 trouncing of Lyon, who just looked a- a- outmatched as they should have been against Manchester City. Sorry, they were Lyon. <laughs> yeah. Um, which sets up the final this uh, this Sunday, I believe. Yes, this Sunday. Uh, PSG versus Bayern. Um, it will be a big one. And, uh, Wes, this is either going to be the return to glory for the Germans or the vindication of all these many years of buildup and all this heartbreak for PSG. Or as I put on Twitter, it's the Blitz versus the Maginot once again. Oh no. Oh no, <laughs> not like this. That's why I love my good old World War II. <laughs> <laughs> not um, like this. Yeah, um, and, and unfortunately for uh, the old uh, the old frog eaters, I kind of expect the same kind of ending. I do believe uh 
I do believe uh, uh, Munich is going to be lifting the trophy at the end of the day. Um, Only when the the way it ends then is as they're about to lift the trophy, uh, Liverpool and I don't know Real Salt Lake come in at the last minute and beat the Germans to retain the trophy for good. Oh God, that's your cops music. You'll never, walk. Uh, You'll never walk alone coming in. All of a sudden, uh, Jurgen Klopp and Virgil van Dijk will walk up and give you one of those, uh, give you one of those commercial turns and folding of the arms and be like, <laughs> he got next. <laughs> God, that would be amazing. That's a terrible Pepsi pitch. Oh, uh, totally, totally. And then, uh, and then Messi and uh, Sala can kick Pepsi cans at a goal. Yeah. Or like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, just a few things to look at uh, for, for, for Bayern. They're going for their sixth uh, European Cup, which would uh, tie them for third all time with Liverpool, who got number six a season ago. In case you didn't know, they had six starts for Liverpool. Uh, good job. <laughs> uh, uh, that would leave, if they get it done, that would leave Liverpool and Bayern one behind uh, AC Milan for second mm. all time. Mm-hmm. Um, now Milan is starting to kind of turn around a little bit. That said, if if Munich win it, God, going into next year, two of your absolute European favorites would be Munich and Liverpool. So you know, yeah. so one of them could be coming up quickly uh, on AC Milan before it's all said and done. Uh, so there is some historical context there um, for PSG. Obviously, their first trip to the final, the first time a French team has been in the final since Monaco in two thousand. Four. Um, so uh, th- there's some precedent there for PSG. Uh, as we said, we, we we spoke of the war. We know how that went back in 1939. Not well mm-hmm. for the uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know, I love bringing up a World War II. Hitler versus the Nazis. Oh Jesus, God! Just like oh no! Oh, oh no! Um. But to me, my quick my quick preview, um, Bayern are the better team. Mm-hmm. But man, you cannot count out PSG just based on that Neymar, Di Maria, Icardi, and uh, oh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Mbappe. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, what's his name on the outside? Who is just the X factor of X factors at this point? Uh, Bayern play a flat line at the back. Um, you can with speed, you can catch Bayern behind them. And Mbappe is full of nothing but, uh, as Eleanor Roosevelt said, hot nasty ass speed. Yeah, exactly. We learned, yeah, we learned that from uh, Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. Hot nasty <laughs> ass. Speed. That's what America's built on, hot, nasty ass feet. Uh, Elmore Roosevelt. Um, <laughs> but there are going to be chances. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. PSG are going to have chances. Mm-hmm. You've seen from Neymar, what's the best thing you can do from Neymar? Let him shoot. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> build the chances. Neymar is amazing at setting up the chances, not so much at finishing the chances. If they can control Mbappe, um, they should be all right. I don't see how – my thing is I don't see how PSG are going to slow down Bayern. Good <laughs> God. Um, Arsenal's greatest ever export, Serge Gnabry, scoring goals. Um, uh, God, Alfonso Davies on the other side. God, Alfonso Davies. By the way, heard a great, great story this week about um, – about uh, just talking about how shit Barcelona are when they're recruiting right now. <laughs> Three years ago, Alfonso Davies was brought to Barcelona like, hey, we need to sign this guy. Bartomeu said, ugh, he's Canadian. Oops. Um, hello, Wes Bradshaw isn't running this team. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to have an eye for talent. I just don't like Canadians. <laughs> Except for you are fine Canadian listeners. You're the, you're the only good Canadians, obviously. Exactly. Uh, and Pamela Anderson, you were amazing. Um, but, uh, you know, Davies is fantastic. Thomas Muller is just – Thomas Muller is just Thomas Muller. No one can yeah. figure out if he's really good or not, but he is. Spoiler, he is, but no one can really figure it out. Lewandowski's the best striker in the world. 
you know, Harry Kane had that fight with him for a few years, but right now Harry Kane isn't even seeing the back of Lewandowski. The thing is, Harry Kane might still be the second best striker in the world. So yeah, that just shows you how damn good Robert Lewandowski is right now. Um, in midfield, they're fantastic. Um, that back line can get got. The back line there will be get, chances. There will be chances. Um, will PSG be clinical and take those chances? That's always the interesting point. That said, there's going to be chances going the other way. I could actually see this being a nice scoring final. We always say, oh, my God, this will be a great final, and it ends up being 1-0 nil or 0-0 nil nil and we go to penalties. You know, last year we were all excited for what Liverpool and uh, Tottenham were going to be because we've seen those matches. And it was, it was, other than the fact that Liverpool lifted the trophy at the end, it was crap. Oh, it was just, it was not a good match to watch. Um, I can see this being a little more like the one the year before with Madrid and Liverpool, where there will be some goals going in. Um, I think both teams are going to have chances. They both have those world-class type players that can finish some chances. Uh, Final score prediction, uh, Bayern 3, PSG 1. Wow. All right. I, I can see it. I can see it. I can certainly see it. So we will see if that comes to fruition. We'll be back next week to talk about the fallout from the final. So uh, very excited to see if uh, Thomas Tuchel will be having to lightly and gingerly dance around as his team lifts the trophy or if fine German engineering will once again uh, shine old big ears into something suitable for Angela Merkel. All right, uh, that is the Champions League. Uh, Knockout, uh, European style now uh, for the Europa League. Um, Inter Milan pounds Shakhtar 5-0 in the semifinal, and Sevilla gets past Manchester United 2-1. United's 47,000th penalty on the season, not enough for them to get through against Sevilla. And, Wes, we have uh, an Italian versus Spanish final here uh, coming up in just a couple days here on Friday. Uh, Sevilla and Inter, um, no strangers to um, European titles. Sevilla, especially the last decade, has been very strong in the Europa League. Um, so a quality match coming up here. And again, I'm sure you take no pleasure in United falling out of Europa. Oh, God, not only that, they were abject. They sucked. God, I, every time I watch Harry Maguire, I'm like, really? He's <laughs> bounds on this guy? Wow. That is, yep. Harry Maguire may be the most um, Ed Woodward signing of them all. <laughs> I mean, he's not bad. That's the thing. He's yeah. not bad, but for a world record fee, I mean, you, you look 20 miles down the road and Liverpool set a world record fee and got the best guy in the world. <laughs> you set a world <laughs> record fee and get a guy called old Slabhead <laughs> who plays like a Slabhead. Um, yeah, United United still just have so much to do. Um, they're obsessed with getting Jaden Sancho. That is, that is not luck. what they need. To, that is not what they really need is Jaden Sancho. They need a striker. Yeah. They need a left back. They need another center back. <laughs> they need a lot, and they're just obsessed with getting a right winger. So, <laughs> um, and, Honestly, I still don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the answer. But you know what? Right now, for for me, he's a damn fine yeah. answer. Of so, course. Yeah. It's like they're just, and the thing is, it it got a lot of their uh, cracks got papered over this year because the rest of the Premier League just like nobody wanted to finish in the top four. Yeah. Than, well, nobody wanted to finish in the top four, so United kind of got there by default. Yeah, uh, United, they were poor on the night, and you know they were crying that they didn't get another penalty call because twenty-one penalties this year for United. By the way, yep, it's like I believe most, almost a record. Well, that was a Premier League record with fourteen, mm-hmm. and I want to say twenty-one may have been the most in Europe ever. Yeah, I mean it was crazy, mm-hmm. just insane. 
you know, and, and then, but, but then they want to call Liverpool the Marvel. <laughs> Uh, Bruno Fernandez, who they say is the greatest player ever, you know, he scored maybe 10 goals for United, seven of them were good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Bruno. Poor Bruno. But, and uh, I love you, since Bruno came, this one the most talked about my real life. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, man. All right, let's hit the, uh, the news and notes. Before we make more fun of United, oh, uh, real quick, um, yes. uh, we'll hit a, qu- a couple of these stories pretty quick here. Um, end of the year player uh, awards were given out for the Premier League. Uh, Trent gets Young Player of the Year, which I, I, I still think needs to be changed who exactly qualifies for Young Player of the Year, but he fits the criteria and he's probably the best choice. So good for him on winning. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne wins player of the season, and I didn't have this written down, but I believe Klopp won coach of the season. Yes. Okay. Um, any any thoughts on the uh, the trio of awards there? Um, just to throw the thing out on the young player, somehow was it Jack Grealish like still nominated for it, even though he's like about to turn twenty five? Yeah, I, so. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's a, yeah, they totally got to redo that. And you know the thing is, we saw it with Harry Kane. Yeah, uh, when exactly. You get a yes. guy, when you get a guy who is like legitimate world class, shit, you know they're gonna just take it. I mean, personally, if Trent keeps doing what he's doing, I don't see how you don't give it to him for like the next three or four years. You know. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, just just to comment on that, I, I think that's one of those. I think once you win it once, you need to be like retired out of it. <laughs> um, I think hey, they do need to work on that age a little bit. But I think, yeah, I think once you win Young Player of the Year once, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, okay, you've done it. You know, now you can't do it again. <clears throat> yeah, and Tottenham went oh. through a weird, a weird stretch where it was like, Her- uh, Kane finished first uh, his rookie season, or yeah, rookie season mm-hmm. for Tottenham. And then Delhi won it back-to-back years, and I'm pretty sure at least one, if not both of those years, like Kane still finished second or third. Yeah, and so, it's like they kind of did it just because they were like, well, we don't want to give it to Kane again. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's a cool award, but it's a little redundantly ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I, but, I would not uh, mind because right now the, uh, the it's age 23 or under mm-hmm. and at, at, at the start of the season. So if you turn 24 one week into the season, yeah. you're still eligible. Um, which, I, basically I honestly, is, which basically is what happened with Jack Grealish. Yeah. And so what I what I wish is if um, they would also institute a uh, a minutes rule, maybe Uh, like if you play once you've played 3000 Premier League minutes, which is essentially, I think, like a little over 30 matches. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. You're 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 done that 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 season you crossed over 33,000 minutes or or whatever. The number yeah. is that's that's your last season you can win the award. That's it. Um, because again, all all due respect to Trent, he he was phenomenal and with the criteria, yeah. absolutely deserving. But like it, it the American in me wants this to be a rookie of the year award. Yeah. And it, it's clearly not. No, <laughs> so. no. Well, and once again, the thing is, I mean, obviously I love Trent. Trent's my guy. But the thing is, I don't really want to see. I'm not interested to see Trent win this award for the next three years. Wes, do you Trent, remember who won the award last year? No, who won last year? Raheem. Oh God, that's right. And uh, he's, he's not. And just to finish on Jack Grealish, I'll end up. Jack Grealish turned 24 on September 10th last year, so he's about yeah. to turn 25 in like a month. In less yeah. Than a month. And he's still up for it. It's, it's it's just it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see some change here. Um, <clears throat> De Bruyne, absolutely zero problem. De Bruyne's phenomenal. Mm. Um, Jordan Henderson won the PFA Player of the Year, mm-hmm. and I understand that. Apparently, from from what I deem from the experts from over there. Um, usually mm-hmm. that award goes to more than just being the best player on the field. Um, mm-hmm. It goes into a lot of things off the field. Uh, they're the British. They look at a lot of things such as, you know, 
uh, Jordan Henderson being the captain who pushed right. Liverpool this time. There was a lot that went into that. Um, but, yeah, by far the best player on the field to me this year was um, Kevin De Bruyne. Last year was Virgil to me. This year was De Bruyne. The year before, I thought it was uh, most of so, um So no problem there. And really, the manager of the year came down to Klopp and Chris Wilder, if you ask me. Yeah. And I while agree. what Chris Wilder did was completely amazing and in most mm-hmm. other years would have run away with this award. Mm-hmm. I mean, what Klopp did, to me, this is kind of like a culmination of this award for Klopp, Mm -hmm. where you've seen it every year, and this year they peaked. Mm -hmm. Um, First time in 30 years they lift the trophy. He's coming off a European championship. Um, Mm -hmm. God, I can't even remember all the records right now that jump off at me, but the longest unbeaten streak in the Premier League history – I think the best start in Premier League history. I mean, there was <clears throat> there was so much where, at the end of the day, Klopp was Klopp wasn't the sexy pick like Chris Wilder would have been. But I mean, hundred percent, he's the best pick. He's the right pick. Yeah, um, I think so. And, and that said, and here's my thing, kind of with Manager of the Year. So if Klopp turns around and does it again next year, I don't know if you automatically give it back to him. Because it was more like that's an expectation, and I, I want right. to see, I want to see guys who exceed expectation. That's why Chris Wilder have been great. But I don't think, I don't think it was a slam dunk that Liverpool were going to come in and win the league this year. Because you know, I think everyone was still expecting Will City still a team to beat. Sure, I, so, I, I'm, I understand that. So no issue with Klopp winning it. No issue with, uh, no issue with any of those picks. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we went into the young player. I'd just like to see that. <laughs> fixed i'll just say fixed so yeah because i do think i i I, and i could be getting this wrong and i'm sure like i could get yelled at with like at least four different names but even with his injuries this this felt like this just should have been christian pulisic's award um just based on how we would think of like a rookie of the year award uh, and especially with the way he finished but i i don't think he was better over the course of the year than trent so, so when you when you take it to like what the what the regulations are currently, yeah, yeah, give it to Trent. I I completely understand that, but it was just like, man, ah, oh, man. Oh, well, well you so know, that's... someone like someone like Pulisic. I mean, Pulisic had a great year, but also at the same time, Pulisic he was out for an extended period of time with injury. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He was, and even when he was healthy, he was somewhat in and out of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think with Pulis- Pulisic. I guess this is more just my little trend argument, which I wasn't asked to make, but I'll make it anyway. Um, sure. I think Pulisic went through two really, really good spells. Okay. Where, you know, back in the fall, suddenly he hit it, and he was scoring, he was scoring, he was scoring, and then he got hurt. Mm-hmm. And then, especially after the restart, he he was hitting it again. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for Pulisic, stay healthy and put it together for a season. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what we want to see now from Christian Pulisic. And you too, Christian, can win three player young player of the year awards if you try. And he's still, he can still win four. <laughs> <laughs> um, other other minor news. Uh, our, our name, one of our names. Thanks for 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 our group, the company. Vincent oh, has retired from football. Uh, he is now becoming full time coach of Anderlecht, not just a uh, player coach. Uh, David Silva, we mentioned him earlier. Apparently he wasn't fit enough to play against uh, Lyon, but he is getting a statue outside of the Etihad. Congratulations on that. Um, and, and is getting a new place to go play. Yeah, it's, uh, oh. What's he, all right? Yes, yes. Yes. I, I knew it was a slightly lower uh, after time. After apparently, uh, and apparently uh, Lazio were pissed because they, um, they felt they had an agreement with him. Yeah. And we're letting him finish up, and then suddenly he's all I have over Lindsay. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, um, for what? Uh, <laughs> uh, United and City will be getting an, uh, a slight uh, postponement to the start of their next season, as we talked about, I think, a couple weeks ago. Um, if, if a team went deep into the European competitions for the Premier League, their start would get pushed back a week, and both of those will be. <laughs> Um, and then Wes, uh, I think one you were referencing, referencing earlier, as far as transfers go, 
uh, Man City will be submitting a 70 million euro bid to Napoli uh, within the next day or two for Koulibaly. Um, and, and you're right. Hey, that's a big name. City loves sexy names, baby. Per- seems perfect to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, here's the deal. I mean, Koulibaly is going to be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's going to be Baron yes. Johnson's, right? Um, yes. You would figure the pairing, the pairing they're really going for, you would figure would be uh, Koulibaly and um, Laporte. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean that that would be a that would be a good pairing. You would figure. Uh, my only concern for Koulibaly, I guess, almost would be more. Well, okay, a couple of concerns. One. Having to come in and adjust to England, sure. Because as we know, I mean, it is it's different, man. It is different. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, for whatever it's worth, you've got to come in. You've got to pick up the speed. And being in Italy as long as he has, this is a different speed. So um, anyway, um, also for Koulibaly, I mean, Koulibaly's not a spring chicken. Um, no. I want to say he's 30 already. Um, let's check real quick. I'll pull up Koulibaly. Uh, Koulibaly, okay. Okay, actually, Koulibaly just turned 29 in June. So okay. he's not quite as he's not quite as old as I was thinking he was. Um, but, you know, what's worth, I mean, we'll just have to see how he ages. And yeah. once again, in the Premier League, we'll have to see how he ages. Um, but, I mean, for City... Definitely Koulibaly is the top center back who's out there. Um, that proven, I'll say that top proven mm-hmm. center back out there. There is a there are a lot of and we a guy we mentioned earlier up a up a combo up a bunch of or, yeah. <laughs> yes. Basically the entire back line for RB Leipzig. <laughs> <laughs> they're young, they're talented, they're coming up, um, and they're supposed to be kind of the next great generation. But um but for Koulibaly, he is a proven commodity, and that's what City need right now is a proven commodity at the back. So uh, sure. if, if they do it, I'd say it's a great great sign for City. Um, I kind of chuckle, even though City get even though City will improve on it, I still chuckle at Manchester United because instead of getting Koulibaly, they paid more and got Harry Maguire. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> apparently they're uh, they're extending one of their keepers. And to make him one of the world's richest goalkeepers, even though he's never played for the club. Oh man! Well, um, you know, Dean Henderson. That is a really slippery slope for United right now. <laughs> because here's the thing, Dean Henderson. What we've seen at Sheffield, this is a guy who, in a year or two, could be the England number one for the next decade. Um. God, I think anybody should be the England number one over Jordan Pickford. <laughs> um, so, I mean, they they needed to do something because you can't just keep sending them out and you certainly don't want to sell the guy. You're paying De Gea huge money. De Gea's shown regression. Maybe you see this as, well, you know what, this will spur De Gea, and then if De Gea comes back and has a strong season, we can sell him and get a good price back on him. It's just, it, it's a headache for United. It, it's it's a headache that you want in the fact that it's a great young player, but it's just, that's the thing. It's another headache for Manchester United. Absolutely. Um, another deal going through here. Uh, Willian, the Brazilian, uh, will be heading over to Arsenal from Chelsea. Um, and as we've seen in previous years, you know, that, Always goes super well for Arsenal. Um, an, an interesting move there, but someone who who might fit into Mikel Arteta's plans very well if if it all comes together. Um, any any other deals you wanted to uh, to discuss, Wes? Any transfer rumors that got you particularly uh, excited? Ben White is the name. On speaking of people wanting center backs. Uh, ben White is the name on a lot of lips around England right now. Uh, Brighton and Hove Albion, who actually for the last couple of years um, loaned him out to Leeds United down in the championship to get experience, 
Uh, well, this past year, he was uh, he was the only player on that Leeds team that won the league to play every minute of the league season. Uh, he was one of the best center backs in the championship. He's 22 years of age. Uh, he's British. He, he's English, which is obviously makes him great. Um, and now Brighton and Hove are kind of playing. They're playing the game because they do hold the cards with this guy. Um, you know, they want to hold on to him for a year, let him play in the Premier League for them. A, get the benefit of having a really good young center back, and B, keep driving that price up. Leeds have made, I believe, three uh, offers for him. It looks like this third one probably also going to be not the way. Um, the big dogs in it, Chelsea and Liverpool, uh, are monitoring the situation. That obviously doesn't mean you're going to see either of them putting out an offer anytime soon, but... If this for Liverpool and Chelsea, this could be a guy who, hey, in a year, this might be where we want to be. Um, so uh, for Brighton and Hove, it's like, you know, do we take money now or do we wait a year and maybe see if he goes from, you know, we could get 30 million for him to, let's see, in a year, maybe we can get 45 or 50 million for him. And also, we're, as we know, we're not in a seller's market with COVID. Sure. Um, because here's the thing, you know, all these clubs, you know, they still want, you know, uh, Leverkusen, they still want 80 million pounds for uh, Kai Havertz. <laughs> so, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know if we can all drop 80 million pounds at this point in time anymore. <laughs> so, um, COVID finances still fall into this. A lot of things fall into it. But uh, Ben White is one to definitely keep your eye on. Uh, the whole Kai Havertz, that is still out there. Uh, Jaden Sancho is still out there. Um, Dortmund have said, hey, it's done. Jaden Sancho is going to play for Dortmund this year. That's really nice to say. I'll fully believe that when uh, the transfer window closes. <laughs> sure, buddy. That's because, yeah, okay. because uh, really, to me, all you're saying right there is um, you're saying, hey, Ed Woodward, you better pay up if you really want him yeah. now. Because, <laughs> because once again, with Ed Woodward, they put all their, they put all their eggs in that basket. They put all their eggs in that basket, mm. and now you know what are you going to do? You know, now you're just going to piss people off if you don't get him. So, um, see what happens there. Uh, speaking of Jack Grealish earlier, I read a good article on the Athletic. We can always start pimping them at any time. Read a good article about him on the Athletic as to you know what is his future because once again that's another one of those Aston Villa they want big money for Jack Grealish. Yeah. Who's in the market to spend big money for Jack Grealish right now? An interesting thing that was put in there is the worst thing Jack Grealish may have done for himself this summer was to score the goal to him in the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> because if they go into the championship, well, you know what? We got to sell them because we got to get the money. You know, we'll cut that price down some and let's see who'll come give us 25, 30 million pounds for him. Well, now they want 70 million pounds for him. <laughs> and. You know, United are more in the Jaden Sancho sweepstakes. No one else has really been that connected to um, to Jack Grealish. Tottenham were in on him last year, but I don't think they want to spend the money it's going to take to get him out of Villa. Mm-hmm. Villa are at a point where they don't have to sell because of, you know, they've got Premier League money now. They don't have to sell. So... That's one just to kind of keep your eye on. I think if something happens with Grealish, it's going to be later in the window where teams are kind of figuring out, well, this is what's going to happen. You know, I could see United, if they don't get Sancho, you know, maybe middle end of September, okay, maybe let's look over here at Jack Grealish now because we can we can use him. We can bring him in. We can put him on the squad. And he can play for us. So those are just something to keep your eye on. Interesting. Yeah. Um, interesting. And, and, then, if, and then we'll hit those athletic articles in a minute, really talking about some transfers. <laughs> well, I was about to say, if you want to use that to transition into pimping the athletic, you can, you can go right for it, man. So um, let me pull my phone out. My article of the day on the athletic mm-hmm. was about good old Barcelona. <laughs> oh, um, no. Because, you know, sorry, Barca fans. Um Almost all of Barcelona's squad are for sale. There's just one problem. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is, so Barcelona, to give you the nickel version of this dollar tale, 
Um, as we talked about earlier, Barcelona are old. Barcelona <laughs> need to be retooled. They need to revamp that whole squad. Here's the problem. They are paying so much money for these old, over-the-hill players that what is the impetus for, let's just say, Luis Suarez to leave that massive contract he's got to go somewhere else where they're not going to pay him the same? Arturo Vidal, PK, Busquets, um, Jordi Alba. These guys who, who have been said, hey, they're available. Come and get them. Well, A, you've told me you don't want them, so why am I going to pay you premium dollar for them? And B, I'm not going to pay the. I might pay these guys half of what you're paying them. Why the hell are they going to want to leave that? Yeah. You know, if I'm 33 years old and I'm under contract for two more seasons and you're paying me 10 million euros, why am I going to go somewhere where I'm going to have to reprove myself and they're going to want to sign me for a two-year contract and pay me 4 million euros? <clears throat> Sorry, Barcelona, you signed these horrible contracts. Here's the thing. Barca wants to revamp that whole team. I don't think they're going to be able to do it because I don't think you're going to be able to sell these guys that you want to sell. The only guys that you're going to be able to sell are going to be the younger guys who it's like, wait a minute, we kind of need them for the rebuild. Um, Barcelona have done so bad in their recruiting, and this story just goes into it. Uh, God, and, and I still don't think they know what they're doing. Um, Bartomeu at the beginning of the week is talking, you know, me and Eric Adabal, we're going to we're gonna break this team down and we're going to rebuild it. And then on Tuesday, he fires Eric Adabal. <laughs> Barca have no idea what the hell they're doing, man. They have signed Ronald Koeman, Ronald Koeman, yeah. as their new manager. And here's the thing. I'm not saying that's a bad signing, but we talked about this last week. Pochettino, mm-hmm. you dodged a bullet, bro. Yeah, you know you're coming in as a one year guy here. You're you're basic. It's basically like being. It's basically like going to get a relief pitcher at the trade deadline. You're a three month rental in baseball. Here you're a one year rental because it's going to be Javi. They want Javi coming in next. The only way Ronald. The only way Ronald Koeman is the manager at this time next year of Barcelona is if he won a treble. <laughs> and I'm talking Europe. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking the. Um, you know, don't miss the vodka. <laughs> um, there, that, that's the only way he's still manager next year. And, and for just in Ronald Koeman's part, I kind of feel bad for him because here's a guy who <clears throat> his two dream jobs were Barcelona and the Dutch national team. Well, he got the Dutch national team, and here he was supposed to do Euros this summer, and it got pushed back. Well, it would have been great for him to do Euros you know, try to win Euros with the Dutch and then go to Barcelona. That would have been perfect. Well, now instead, he's having to give up the Dutch job to go to Barcelona for a job that we know he's not going to keep long term. <laughs> oh, only Ronald Koeman. Oh, that Everton no. stink is not coming off him anytime soon. Oh, not like this, Ronald. So, um, it is <laughs> to, to, to quote uh, the underrated movie The Candidate with Zach Galifianakis and uh, Will Ferrell. Uh, Zach Galifianakis' uh, campaign slogan was, this place is a mess and I'm going to sweep it up. And he pulls out a broom. <laughs> but he goes, this place is a mess. <laughs> yes, that is Barcelona at this point. It oh, no. is just a mess. Oh, man. So bad. No, man. Okay. no shot and fright taken from literally anyone else in the Enjoy. world. Right I love now. it. I love it. Keep it coming, man. Keep it. Um, my I have a couple of things. Um, one still enjoying the uh, the Premier League sixty, um, and as the Athletic is doing, they're getting into even more lists. Joe Posnanski, obviously the trailblazer with his baseball one. Um, they're now doing greatest sports comeback. Um, they're doing the top forty greatest sports comebacks. Uh, number twenty one just came out. Um, about Mario Lemieux returning to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the NHL. Uh, I am actually quite excited because I loved watching this as a kid. Um, number 29, the impro- the insanity of the improbable 99 U.S. Ryder Cup win, um, which was just bonkers and as American as all get out. Um, so I, I'm very excited to read that article. Um, one I really enjoyed as far as soccer, 
Um, how did Stoke get relegated with so many Champions League semifinalists? Oh, well, I mean, oh, that's basically good. finalists at this point. I mean, yeah. yeah. When you when you take into account that um, a year ago, uh, Shakiri won it, and this year yep. Chupa Motain's there, and God, yeah, you go back. It's it's an insane list from Stoke. It's not great. Um, and then lastly, I haven't read this yet because I just found it, but I, I am kind of excited to read it. Um, outdated and really silly, MLB reaction to Tatis' slam shows times are changing. Um, so basically, if you didn't, if you haven't heard about it, um, the San Diego Padres in Major League Baseball uh, were up pretty big on the Texas Rangers on Monday night. And Fernando Tatis, who is a young star in the game, um, took a swing on a 3-0 fastball and hit a grand slam. And you think, okay, if, if you don't really know anything about baseball, you're like, okay, what seems so bad about that? Well, then he uh, got, what? or I think the next player got thrown at, or he got thrown at. Um, and uh, basically the Texas Rangers started complaining about, oh, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to swing at 3-0 pitches. When you're up with such and such runs, meh, meh, meh. And it used to be, like, when that would happen, a lot of people would come out and be like, yeah, that's right. It's the unwritten rules of baseball. You don't do that shit. And it seems like with this one, it's like, no. No, we don't We don't care anymore. Just, I think, as one person <laughs> said, I, I think one of Tatis's teammates was asked about it. And uh, his response was, well, he should have made a better 3-0 pitch. Um, That's exactly my response. Like, at, th at this point, like, I, I think the, the needle is moving. One, because I think people are just realizing some of these unwritten rules in baseball were really stupid. But I think the other thing is, I think baseball realized they've lost a lot of young people in terms of their audience, <clears throat> the excitement. Um, and I think anything they can do to make the game more exciting is a good thing. And if, if that means Fernando Tatis has to take you deep, even when it's 10 to 3 on a Monday night in Stoke, well, hey, it's exciting. It's a grand slam. The kid is so much fun to watch. <clears throat> Let's have some fun with this. But no, God, God, mm, mm, written rules. So... I really like it. I, I like when people pimp. I liked when Jose Batista, not that I like Jose Batista that much, but when he hit that home run for the Blue Jays in the playoff game, I believe also against the Texas Strangers, and uh, and just like stood there for like three seconds and then just threw his bat. <clears throat> oh, I was all over that. I love that shit. I, I want people to pimp everything. Like that's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clue in on something that some of our listeners may not know, but I know because I played baseball. Hitting home runs is actually kind of difficult, and only a select few people on this earth can actually do it at a consistent rate. Those people should be celebrated and should be able to get excited about it. So, I don't know. I'm I'm excited that it seems like a, a number of people within the actual game of baseball, actual players, are starting to kind of relax a little bit with these unwritten rules, and that makes me excited as maybe one of the last 10 baseball fans in America um, that I've really followed this season. The Red Sox. But um, things like this are exciting and I think would help MLB finally, finally start to trend in a different direction with young people. Cause my God, do they need it? I don't, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that Wes. I don't know if you really kept up with it or whatnot, but. Oh, I, I, I threw my little fit about it. Um, I, here's the thing, I'm I'm more of a I personally kind of identify as more of an old school baseball purist. I don't really like a lot of the things that they're doing this year. I'm hoping it's just because it's COVID year and this is going to be an outlier for a lot of things. Um, but in this case, you know, here's the thing, I have seen seven run leads disappear. Oh yeah, for sure. They can disappear. Oh, very quickly. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, way, the way I came up playing baseball, the way I was taught to play, and you know what? I've got some good friends. One of my best friends 
is a baseball coach. That is his job. <laughs> of course, our good friend of the pod here, baseball brick. Um, <laughs> you know, the game's not over until the 27th out is recorded. Mm-hmm. And you play hard and you play you play to go. Now that said, there are times when you know your limitations. Um, mm-hmm. an, an old an old uh, baseball game we still talk about around these parts was um, uh, when the aforementioned baseball Brit was playing middle school baseball at Edwards. They played Phillips, which is a very rural, very poor, very poor baseball. Um, area around our around our municipality, uh, where Edwards was like you know I mean that basically this team would go on to be ranked by the time they were in high school. So um, they played three innings. The final score was sixty four to nothing. And basically, after the second time through the order, they played station to station baseball, no matter what they did. You know, you could hit one 300 feet in the gap. You were running one base at a time. Um, oh yeah, I remember doing that just to, real quick. Like I, uh, when we played Goldsboro, um, and, Goldsboro was very similar to that. Right. And there are times like that where you do take your foot off the pedal, and that's sure. sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. Come closer, Texas Rangers. Come closer. <laughs> you play in the fucking big leagues. You're Major League Baseball players. Do you not believe that you can come back from seven runs down if you don't get the fuck out of the sport because you don't belong here? No, it's baseball. Make a better pitch at 3-0. Don't let him hit a grand slam. Throw one of the dirt and walk a run in. Do something. Do not leave a ball over the plate where he can hit it. Throw an off-speed pitch. Do something. I understand in middle school, in Little League, the old 3 is an old automatic fastball down the middle of the plate for called strike. We get that. This is the majors. <laughs> You're professionals. Don't get pissed because a professional does a professional thing, which is mm-hmm. to go yard on your ass. Yeah. You say pimp it out. Mm, not so much of a pimp it out kind of guy. I do believe in show a little more respect for the game. Um, I think it depends. Well, and I think there's a case-by-case basis. I think if it's something like the playoffs where emotions Mm -hmm. are running high, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if it is 12 to nothing and you hit a a solo homer in the top of the eighth against my seventh relief pitcher, Mm -hmm. don't stand there and stare at it. Just go. The game. I get that. Yes, you know. So there are. I think you have to take everything with a grain of salt, um, mm-hmm. and and you do have to look at the situation. But mm-hmm. I, I here's the thing: there are unwritten rules I agree with. I don't like budding to break up a no hitter. Yeah. Now that said, once again, situation Depends. is it yeah. is it zero zero in the eighth, or am I throwing a no hitter and I'm and I'm up nine to nothing in the seventh? Yeah. Then don't bunt. That's just kind of a dick move. But mm-hmm. if there's a chance in there where you're playing to win the game, yeah. drop a bunt, make me make a play. Yeah, if it's um, yeah, absolutely. So you know, so there are everything, everything has circumstances. Mm-hmm. The other night mm-hmm. in that game, it's seven nothing. We have once again, we have seen seven run leads disappear very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um throw a better pitch. Yeah. Throw a better pitch. When when a guy makes you pay by hitting a bomb, because once again, like you said, bombs are hard to hit. <laughs> if if somebody's going to hit a bomb off you, that's that's on you. Mm-hmm. That is on you. Once again, it's not like stealing when you're up ten runs. Mm-hmm. It's not like steal a base at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, or or even going second to home on a base hit when you're up ten runs. Those are a little different. But, you know, it's your job to keep the ball. It's your job as the pitcher to keep the ball in the park. Yeah. It's not my job as the hitter to try to keep the ball in the park to spare you. Yeah. I agree. So, piss off. Absolutely. So, yay. Let, the, let them play, as the MLB slogan said. Or let the kids play. That's, that's what they said. As the bad news bears said, let them play. 
Oh, um, I think in terms of playing, I think we're about done for the night. Uh, that is going to bring us to the end here of episode 328 of the Foreign Affair podcast. Once again, shout out to NGSC Sports at NGSCSports.com. We never stop. You can find them on the social as well as us on Twitter as a collective. We are at AFA Pod. Wes, you are. I'm at Wes Bradshaw 21. And I'm at Edward Green. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube via our parent show, The All New Sports Show, and email us at allnewsportshow at gmail.com. Uh, thanks to our podcast providers, including podbean.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio app, uh, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Um, so check us out on all those sites. Um, we'll That's be back Spotify, next week. Uh, yeah, I am I haven't decided if I want to put us on Spotify. I read their... Well, we, we show up on the NGSC Sports uh, feed on Spotify. Uh, okay. okay, so yeah, we're on Spotify. Hey, Woo! you just can't search for us. You search for NGSC Sports, and you find us there on that. Um, so yes, I actually didn't know that. Thank you. Um, but that is going to do it for this episode. But before we get out of here, Wes, anything else you want to drop on the pod? Uh, just talking a little baseball, my boy, be good. He's mm. right at 300. He's slugging up. He's, uh, OPS plus OPS plus. Yeah. Is, um, <clears throat> right up there. Him and I, him and Trout are leading the angels, uh, in the, uh, on base plus slugging. Um, Brian's having a good season, man. When he gets his advance, he's having a good season. Good on him. Uh, college football, as of right now, folks, the good old South is going to play some ball because, by God, that's how we roll. Uh, the ACC, the SEC, the Big 12, the AAC, <clears throat> Conference USA, and the Sun Belt, I think, are the conferences that are still playing football right now. Um, that is as of this recording. <laughs> uh, things... Yes. <laughs> What is it? Um, what's the old Southwest commercial? Life comes at you quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Want to get away? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that might be how college football ends up this year. <clears throat> um, but right now, right now, I'm excited for it just because I need something. I need college football. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but just to throw this out there, um, the SEC schools are talking about doing maybe 25% capacity at the stadiums. I did see that. That is um, interesting. And, and alcohol sales. Yeah, well, obviously, hello. Um, <laughs> if you're going to put them in, you're going to make your money, right? Um, you know, here's the thing, man. In in a 90,000-seat stadium in Georgia, you can figure out a way to do 20,000 people in there. I hope so. <laughs> so um, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the thing is, and I will tell you what will end this faster than anything, right here in our backyard, the good old University of North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah. Where they went to school for like three days and then we're like, okay, everybody go home. <laughs> except um, you football players. You yeah, stay. except you for football and say NC State's in the news with parties. I mean, here's the thing, man. What did y'all expect when you send college kids back? They're gonna party. It's just what it is. You can't I hate to say you can't fix stupid. <laughs> It's it's the J you no know, it's the Jason Bateman gif. I don't know what I was expecting. Really, I don't know. What, I don't know what else you expected from a group of college kids that came to party. They came to party. Um, thank you, nerd. But man, we'll see. From week to week, I'm just I'm holding out for that late September start. Uh, the SEC has released a ten game conference schedule. Oh my mm-hmm. God, it is tasty. <laughs> Every week we're having a bad SEC game somewhere. Oh, it's so good. I'll tell you, you might see if this season does get played, you might see repercussions down the line on conference scheduling, doing the 10-game conference schedule where <laughs> the SEC cuts out. You know, Right now, SEC teams, they play eight conference games, and then they schedule four non-conference. Most of them will play a Power 5 non-conference. Of course, Georgia's going to play Georgia Tech. Um, you know, Clemson and South Carolina are going to play, but then they're going to turn around and they're going to play, you know, Savannah State and Florida A&M and the Citadel. You do this, you cut that down then to two non-conference games. So say for South Carolina, okay, we're going to play Clemson and then, hey, you know what? We can play the Citadel and have like one crap game on our schedule instead of having three or four crap games on your schedule. This could be big. This could be big for the future of college football scheduling. 
I'm just looking at Georgia's schedule, and it's it would be the most 2020 thing. So tasty. that after their game against Vanderbilt on December 5th, they're they're 10 and 0, and they, and then they just say, you know what, guys, I, I it it's gotten too bad again here in the winter. I don't oh, think yeah. we can have an SEC championship game. <laughs> oh, no, my mind. <laughs> That would be one hell of a way to close out 2020. Oh, oh God. That, no. that, that, unfortunately, I think that is how 2020 has to end. Yeah. Cancel the SEC title game. Then we can clean slate 2021. Yeah. 2020 oh. was just one big exhibition. <laughs> just going to our Arrested Development, which we enjoy doing so much. You know, on oh. December 31st, you know what I'm going to do then. I'm going to take a handful of forget me nots or of uh, forget me nots. <laughs> oh. Forget 2020 and just wake up with that good old clean slate. Right, Joe? Joe. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> that, is, uh, uh, that is the ultimate 2020 meme. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> yes. Oh, 2020 was. But thankfully, it was not a mistake for you to listen to this podcast this week. So from a Cullen Crime, Wes Bradshaw, I'm Edward Green. Thanks again for checking us out. And as always, stay safe, wash your hands, and as always, enjoy the football, especially Sunday. Love you guys. Um, here we are, finally the end of the Champions League, as, as yes. it should be. End of all. <laughs> yeah, with, with Champions League qualifiers currently going on. <laughs> Good on yourself. Oh man, kind of bog back on it. Oh, All right, let me let me say. You're listening to NGSE Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop.